Oliver, Oliver in here? No. Wait, go on, Oliver. You buy work yet? Oliver! What you call me name for little fella? Do I know you? I mean, if you know me, I can't. Why your hollering knows me near, man? Hello. Yes, this is Station LLV. Yes, I'm the programs manager. What you say? You're joking. But he should be here already. The program is due to start in the next 15 minutes. An hour to an hour and a half. Is the roadblock that badly? All right, I'll have to see what we can do. Thanks for calling. What am I going to do, sir? The most popular program in the station. The most popular program in the entire nation. And the moderator gets trapped 20 miles out of town. Miss Jones, find out if there are any announcers in the compound. And see if you can get a standby moderator for the private air program. What? Is it Van B? Good Lord. All right. Check and see which announcers are here. Yes? Oh, Lord. He's the only one. All right. Tell him to stand by. Hello. I know. He's stranded 20 miles out of town. Can't get in for now. I'm trying to get a substitute. Yes. Fill him with some music while I find somebody. Somebody to carry on until the moderator gets here. Make an announcement. Okay. This is Station LLV. The time is 10.25 a.m. Private Air, your favorite call-in program, number one in the ratings again, according to the most recent poll. We'll be a little bit late in starting today. Until Private Air starts, we'll invite you to listen to some music. You send for me, sir? Yes, sit down. Your name is? Oliver, sir. What are you now? I didn't say you do anything. Says what then? This is an emergency. <gasps> You're acquainted with the program Private Ear? Oh, oh yes, sir. I, I listen to it every day. It's one of my favorite programs. So you know what goes on in the program. The moderator does and all that. <laughs> oh, yes. I am very well acquainted. Well, I want you to do the show for me today. For about an hour. Me? Just until the moderator gets here. Okay. How can man die better than facing fearful odds? Just turn me loose, Mr. Programs Manager. Now remember, this is the number one program on the station. You can't afford to mess up. Your career might be at stake. Don't worry, sir. I feel confident. And when I feel confident, one does never cease. How long have you been in training? Well, for the past three years, a job one mile every month. No, no, no. I mean training as an announcer. Oh! Uh, for the past two and a half months. So your probation period will soon be up? Yes. I have approximately two weeks more to go. Well, Oliver, if you do this for me today, I'll see that you get immediate confirmation. Leave it to me, boss. Leave it to me. I'll be listening. I expect you to. I'm going to make the hear them Stand up in your head. <laughs> I wonder what he means by that. <laughs> Fade the music. Theme, theme. Hello everybody, men and women, male and female. This is your host for a while on the program, Private Ear. If you have a question to ask, 
Just pick up the telephone and dial the number. You know them. And remember, don't hesitate. It's never too late. Now we have a few letters here and I'm going to read one of them to see what the writer wants. Now, that sound a while ago is a direct tearing of the envelope. No fake sound effects. And this letter comes from Sylvester McIntosh of Big Tree Jungle. Big Tree Jungle. Where that is, sir? Portland. You sure? Blue Mountain Range, man. Blue Mountain Range, eh? Sound like a remote corner of the world to me. Well, Sylvester McIntosh, if you're listening, I'm going to read your letter. Dear moderator, I hope you are well. Well enough. This place where I live have no water, no light, and no road. If you go for a walk at night time, you're bound to buck up in a tree or something. Because you can't see where you are go. It's only on moonlight night that you can travel after dark. For that time, the moon is like a silver coin illuminating the earth. Nice. Nice. Poetic. <laughs> well, Sylvester, you can hear me? Uh, him can hear me? Just go on, man. Just go on. You're wasting time, man. Why are you going to live in a place like that, Sylvester? Without water, light, or road. Or is born your born, dear? <laughs> Carry on, man. Carry on. All right. When it rain heavy, the floors sink about six inches. Right now, I don't know if I'm living in a cave or a house. So, Mr. Moderator, please see if you can get them to run a telephone line into Big Tree Jungle so at least we can call out. In the meantime, we're asking you to phone the Office of Disaster Preparation and send them in. Um, call the Office of Disaster Preparation for me, no? What you say? Telephone call coming in. All right, all right. Put them on. Hello? Hello. Is this Mr. Bates? <laughs> no, not Mr. Bates. Is Dr. Sounded? Incorrect. You mean you don't recognize my voice? Oh, it's Reverend Seed. You're still a cool lady. Then it's who you, sir? <laughs> i give you three guesses. What are you doing on the program? Temporary substitute moderator. I don't know if I want to talk to you. Well, nobody's twisting your arm. It's a free country. Do as you like. But you're fiesty. Well, you fiesty too. Don't talk to me like that. Well, I'll talk to you how I please. Who you think you is, eh? You're out of order, man. Now tell me what is the problem, or I might feel very constrained to hang up on you. I am going to report you to the manager of the station for rudeness. You are very unprofessional. Don't you know the customers is always right? Excuse me, lady. You did have a reason to call the program, didn't you? Yes. Tell it to me. Make us see if I can take off the burden off your back. I got to a sale the other day, and I buy a size 15 dress, uh -huh. which is my size. <laughs> You're a fat woman. Don't be impertinent. <laughs> continue, continue, ask pardon. Very well. Now, sir, when I take home this dress, them say size 15, and I find it too narrow at the shoulder and around the hips. Where are your size? <laughs> What you laughing at, sir? What you laughing for? Ask pardon. Continue, continue, lady. No. I want to know if I must sue the store where I buy the dress and whether I should inform the Consumers League or the Bureau of Standards. But why never try on the dress before you leave the store? You ever go to a sale yet? The place pack up so till you can't even move, much less try on dress. But not, that is not the point, you know, sir. Them say it was a size 15, and it wasn't a size 15. But you should try on the dress. That is all you have to tell me. All right. Okay, call the Consumers League. Or you want me to call them for you? You are no good as a moderator, and I am going to report you to your boss. <laughs> well, you don't sound to me like you're much good either. Anyway, go on. Time to take a break for some commercials. We have to buy bread here, you know. So see you, lady. She's completely out of order.
Get all of it for me while the commercials are on, please. Olive, what is wrong with you, man? You're trying to ruin the program? What? You're not supposed to trace off the callers on the line, man. They will be disparaging remarks. Try to restrain yourself, man. Otherwise, I'll have to pull you off the show. Just be polite. You sound to me a while ago like you're trying to pick a fight with a lady. Don't let me have to call to you again. Miss Jones. Any word from the moderator? Nothing yet, eh? I don't know what I'm going to do. No other announcer don't come in. Look like I have to take over the show myself. This man Oliver is going to give me a nervous breakdown. The Office of Disaster Preparedness is on the line. So what? You asked me to get them for you. Oh, yes. Disaster? What is it? I am a disaster. <laughs> you been listening to the show? Well, listener, don't take no liberties with me, you hear? <laughs> all right, all right. So I make a mistake. Start again. Is this the Office of Disaster Preparedness? Make a talk to somebody in charge, dear. Hello? Yes. I am calling from private ear. I get a letter from a man you see that come from Big Tree Jungle, where there is no light, no water, and no road. And him said that him house sink six inches every time it rain heavy. You can do anything about that to help him? What? Then if your house did sink six inches every time it rain heavy, you wouldn't call it a disaster. <laughs> Sound of people heartless. Anyway, just see what you can do. You hear me? Well, I am telling you, see, I don't know what this country is coming to these days. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. That train, you know, they're driving me mad. I'll have to terminate him. What is this? The headline news. News? Then I have to read you stuff. But I have to never, never tell me about that. What time is news? <laughs> I don't know if you get a chance to overlook the something. Let us see. You're on. Um, good evening. Good morning. <laughs> Excuse me. Here is the news headlines. Yesterday in the parish of Trelawney, a small farmer, Jabez Wilkins, dig up a pumpkin out of his field weighing 80 pounds and measuring 7 feet 6 inches in circumference. I don't believe that. I don't know about you, but I don't believe that. Because I come from country, and from me was a little boy. I never see a pumpkin weigh so much. But listen, up. one time, you see, <laughs> and my next door neighbor, him did cut a cane, and the cane measured 19 feet in length. Yes, 19 feet, you know, because me see that with my two eyes, so I must chew, and my father did measure it with the measuring rod. 19 feet. <laughs> anyway, on with the news. Here is a late item. This morning, at about nine, fire of unknown origin destroyed a dwelling house at 25 Casada Lane, Kingston. 25 Casada Lane? Wait. Now my premise is that. <laughs> hey, where this news item come from? You sure them didn't make a mistake? Read, man, read. You're on the area. But you don't understand. My branch burned down. How am I going manage? I'm not even sure if the insurance is pay up. Uh, anyhow, maybe they make a mistake. And duty come first, right? Here is an overseas item. Fred Sinowatz. You say you pronounce it, right? <laughs> Fred Sinowatz, leader of the SPOs of Austria, said that the present dreadful situation cannot continue. 
the SPO suggested on Monday that the Austrian president, Kurt Wald, is heem or heim? <laughs> heim? Heem? Too much foreign words, yeah. I think we better skip that off. Now, what the next news item say? Oh, cricket! <laughs> One of my favorite sports. Three days of play in the match between the visitors versus West Indies fans the visitors ahead in a very good position to win. West Indies were in deep trouble when play began. After trailing in the first innings, they were 99 for 3. The right arm leg spinner on the visitors team wrecked havoc among the West Indies with 6 wickets for 53 runs of 19.1 overs. He brought down most of his victims with the googly, bowling non-stop from the south. In a memorable innings, senior batsman Jeffrey Dujon kept the West Indies with a magnificent innings of 80 runs in 286 minutes. Poor West Indies. <laughs> you know something? As soon as this program is over, I'm going to sneak up to Sabina Park. Like, so I hope nobody not listening to me. I, I mean, I hope the boss man not listening. And that's it for the news. For this morning. Take it or leave it. <laughs> you hear that it yet again? I'm going to... Miss Jones, anybody coming yet? Hello, private ear. I'm here to take the load off your back. Uh, you're not Mr. Bates. I, I, I'm not Dr. Sound. You're not over and see it. Then who is you, sir? Oliver at large. <laughs> well, well, how are you, doing, sir? I want you to know that I like all you read the news, you know, sir. Yes. Yes, since the latent, exciting, stimulating, and verbatim. See. Yes, and I like how you angle at Lady Carla a while ago, you know. Sympathetic, realistic, and charismatic. Amen. <laughs> now, now, Mr. At large. I have a problem. Well, I'm here to help. Yeah, you know, sir, mongoose take up me yard. Oh, how that happened? Uh, me no know, sir, but from last week, you know, that the all invade my house. Mm, that's a serious businessman. Where you live? Yes, I just down off my lines road, sir, going towards the boulevard. Mm hmm I know that vicinity. Listen, listen tell them a chicken them eat out, you know, sir. Uh, oh, my. That's a pity. And you know, chicken is my favorite, you know. <laughs> a grievous loss, sir. A grievous loss. Uh, uh, and you know how much chicken selling for nowadays, sir? <laughs> I sympathize with you, my friend. One time when I was living in the country, we had a similar experience. Yes, sir. Uh, and what you do? Well, we sprinkle salt on them tail. <laughs> but how right to do that, sir? You don't seem to know what you say, you know, Mr. At Large. And uh, you know how man goes swift, sir? Well, no matter how swift them is, you see. If you sprinkle salt on them tail, them gone. Key. Uh, but how, but how I supposed to get them to wait while I sprinkle salt on them tail, sir? Mongoose is a thing that move like lightning when them see you know, sir. <laughs> well, my friend, all you have to do, you see, is to watch them when they must sleep and <laughs> sprinkle the salt on them tail. <laughs> but, but how I may know when I'm sleeping, sir? <laughs> but you have to observe, man. Watch them. It take time, you know, but... You have to do research. <laughs> but, but, but you is an idiot or what, sir? No, be careful, you know. I will twist you up. <laughs> you are worse. You know, my program manager, you see, he believe that the, the, the caller is always right, you know. But let me tell you something. Don't let that lull you into a false sense of security, for I will destabilize you. <laughs> <laughs> destabilize yourself, sir. You think I'm easy? Sprinkle salt and mango steel. Whoever you are such foolishness. You're making a mockery of my problem, sir. Um, you're ridiculing me? No, 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 no. I am a very peace-loving Jamaican, you know. Conscious of my duty. And I have a brilliant. Oh, you like cricket? How oh, you like what he did to demand them wicked? Oh, yes, sir. I was there for three days, sir. I see when Mark Nita make 45 on Cleveland. Davis will make him, him um, um, 55, sir. Yes. I see when Ken Williams achieved him 72 and 43 and all. Playing some fine strokes through the outside, you know, sir. Yes, sir. And attacking them fast bowlers without any sign of fear at all. I'm going to, I'm going to Savannah Park as soon as I leave here. I'm going to go watch the rest of the match. Really, sir? I might buck you up there then. Oh, you going to know me? Yes, yes, sir. I can tell, sir. I can tell from your voice that you, you're big and you need a knock. 
But see you now, my head is of medium size and my knees do a knock. And in any case, knock knee and big head is describing more than 10,000 people. All right, all right, sir. But uh, what about my mangoes problem, sir? But don't I tell you already? Just sprinkle salt on them till. You come back with that again, sir? Don't try my patience, you know. But why are you so warlike and belly cozy? I don't understand, you know. Why are you so hostile? That is why Mangoos invade your house and take up the whole of your yard. Oh, so you insinuating that that is a punishment or judgment of some sort, sir? Yeah, but hear about the, um, the plague them that the Lord did send on Pharaoh when he did harden him heart. Uh-huh. I will send a plague on you. <laughs> You're threatening me. Oh, you're backing down now, sir, eh? Well, you better back down before I back you up, you know. Well, just for that, you see, I am going to call Commissioner Rick Ricketts and report you. Um, get Commissioner Ricketts on the line for me. You can't do that. What oh, do you mean, me can't? What? Me not understand you. Why I can't do that? The caller is always right. That's what you think, eh? He's on the one thing that saved you. Hey, you're backing down, sir. You're backing down. You better back down, you know. You wait till I catch you at Sabina Park. Hey, wh wh what you want to do? I'm going to knock off your stump. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Take a break. The boss wants to. He said, my wait has arrived. And he's on his way to the studio. Thank God. You told Albert to come here? He's outside now. Send him in. Before you say anything, sir, here is two sides to a story. The right side and the wrong side. Yes, sir. So my side. I feel like terminating you on the spot. Terminate me on my probation, sir. What are you? Who is that, Mr. Hart? You don't hear what the Governor General said. This is the year of the worker. As far as I'm concerned, this is the year of the skilled, efficient worker who knows what he's doing and is prepared to learn and practice the skills of his calling. You have not impressed me as being one sort of person like that. Your performance this morning has been dismal. You <laughs> don't. And in poor taste. You are a disaster. Yes, Miss Jones. You say the switchboard is jammed? People want to know why we have taken off the new moderator. They what? They think he's honest and straightforward? They must be mad. <laughs> The whole world is going mad. What's that you say? Oh, cricket commentator, so buying a bag of steak milk. And have to leave the commentary booth. Oh, Lord. What else can happen? What else? Oliver. Yes, boss, your worship, Lord, sir. You ever done a cricket commentary? <laughs> I don't know. You ever done a cricket commentary? Oh, it's like, and have gone true. Stop that, our boy. The cricket commentator has taken me ill, and I want you to rush down to Sabina Park and take his place. But please, Oliver, don't get carried away like you did on Friday, dear. Just keep it cool. Describe what you see in a restrained and professional manner. And don't make any out of order remarks. No matter how cute some people might think you sound. You understand me, Oliver? Yes, boss, I understand. Or I might have to terminate you. Chillax, boss, man. Why you keep using that term to me, don't you? Don't you know say it undermine my confidence? Pull yourself together, man. Just rush down to Sabina Park and take over. Okay, boss. Anything you say. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Is me, Oliver, talking to you from Sabina Park on this great occasion where the West Indies is facing the savage bowling of the visitors as they try to snatch victory on the last day and closing hour of this exciting match. We are coming now to the close of the game with three West Indies wickets in hand and one hour of play to go. The air is electric with excitement. I can feel it in my bones. Miss George. It's not that I don't trust Oliver, but I just feel it in my bones that I better get down to Sabina Park, just in case. The score is 209 for 7. The bowler coming in from the south 
he delivers off the off stump. The batsman swings, the ball pops into the onside next to the gully. There's a man at slip, a silly point, a forward off spin, a stupid mid on, a silly mid off, and a silly gully. There's a man at extra cover, another at forward short leg, and also at backward long leg. Or whatever it is, then call it. Bowler comes in, he delivers. He's bold, he's bold off the mid stump. Ladies and gentlemen, he's bold. Now West Indies is definitely in trouble. It is now 209 for eight. West Indies, I'm telling you, I do not know, but they're definitely in trouble. Next batsman now coming to take his guard. I feel sorry for him in my heart. Poor soul. Oliver, you sure you know what you're talking about? Shame on your manager. You know how long I've been associated with cricket? From I was a little youth wearing short pants and playing with coconut butter and condensed tin. <laughs> That's the trouble. It's not bat and ball, no, no. This is cricket. So what are you trying to tell me, say? That I'm just a little coconut bat boy? You say so? Talking about silly mid gully and forward leg cover or whatever. Chuck it is you're talking about. You see? It's because you don't understand the language of cricket. Why are you talking them foolishness there, no boss? Anyway, the bowler is coming in and so they're getting ready, boss man. So you better just shove off and leave this business to the professionals. West Indies need 21 runs to win. But will they get it? It hardly seems possible to me. Tension is in the air. Tension is everywhere. The bowler delivers. The batsman chops. My goodness! The fielder dives to his left, takes the catch. He's out! Ladies and gentlemen, this looks like the end of the West Indies. Last batsman to come in now. Lamb to the slaughter. But what is this? The batsman is refusing to come. He can't face the pressure. This is too much. This is a crisis. The West Indies is going down. And ladies and gentlemen, as a patriotic West Indian, I have to do something. I can't stand by. Oliver, Oliver, where are you going? Get back to your post. How can man die better than facing fearful odds for the honor of his country and the ashes of his gods? Oliver, Oliver, what are you going to do? Ladies and gentlemen, a crisis has arisen. What are we going to do? The West Indies is facing defeat. One man left. They need 21 runs to win, and our commentator has deserted his post. But what is this I see now? There is a commotion on the field. Our commentator is having words with the West Indies captain. What? They are giving him a cap, gloves, a white shirt on the back. I cannot imagine what is wrong. But this is indeed a dark day for the West Indies. Oliver, our commentator, is walking resolutely onto the field towards the wicket. And I can only imagine that he's going to bat as the last one in for the West Indies. This is ridiculous. He's only a simple coconut bat and condensed in boy. The bowler will murder him. Oliver is taking his stand now, banging away at the crease and flexing his knees. He fixes the bowler with a baleful eye, but the bowler is that intimidated. Bola comes in, Oliver goes back and bangs it past the middle. The ball is not fielded. Going, it's going, it's going to the boundary. It's a four! Oliver is off the mark. Unbelievable. This brings the score, ladies and gentlemen, to 213 for nine, which was still there's no needing 17 to win. Four balls left in the over. In comes the bowler. Oliver drives the swan off the back foot into the offside and onto cover. It's another four, ladies and gentlemen. 217 for nine. 13 runs to win. Oliver on eight. A slip, a silly point, and a forward off point. Ola runs forward. Oliver swings recklessly. The ball goes down towards the third man, wide of the diving fielder. Another four. It's incredible, unbelievable. Oliver is now on 12. Score 221 for nine. West Indies now need nine runs to win. 
two balls left in over, this youth here at the by the Park is electrified and on their feet. In comes the bowler. Oliver chopped this one high in the air. It's going to be a catch. The field is not dead. He drops it. He drops the ball. And in the meantime, the batsman have taken two. Oliver now on 14. He was lucky that time. But I think his luck is running out. 223 for nine. Seven runs to win, ladies and gentlemen. Last ball in the Oliver. Ola delivers. Oliver steers this one down to the gully where it is picked up and they take one which means that Oliver will again face the bowling in the next over 224 for 9 6 runs needed to win Oliver on 15 you can put tension here with a knife Oliver is looking shaky now I think the tension is getting to him this little coconut bat and condensed thin boy has done a miraculous job so far but I think he's finished I can tell he's finished the bowler knows he's finished Slip on gully, close feeling, mid off, mid on, third wicket. The bowler is vigorously polishing the ball. He comes in now. Oliver shuffles forward and swings ferociously. He loses his balance and falls flat. The ball. the ball. The ball is rising into the air like a rocket, like a missile. Here are four fielders are racing to get under it. Oliver lies where he has fallen, gazing upward. The ball, the ball keeps going, going, going over the heads of the racing fielders, over the heads of the spectators. The ball has disappeared, ladies and gentlemen. It's a six, a six West Indies win, ladies and gentlemen. The whole place has gone mad. Yes, sir. You can talk to me now. Oliver, I was just about to call. Now about your probation. Yes, sir. I must confess that I don't know what to do with you. You have broken every rule in the book. And yet, yet, I must say, you have increased the listenership of Radio LLV by a hundred percent. Therefore, I'm pleased to tell you that I'm about to take you off probation and appoint you a permanent member of staff with an increase of twenty dollars per week. You don't seem very pleased with what I'm saying. Tired, sir. Tired. To tell you the truth, you know, it's only one request for I come in here to see you, you know. Oh, if it has to do with salary. No, Chief. It's not that. I know I'm not entitled to it yet. But, but, you can give me two weeks leave.